Hi and welcome to this DigitalOcean tutorial for beginners. In this video, let's see how you can use DigitalOcean. And if you don't know what DigitalOcean is, it's a cloud provider that provides virtual machines, storage, and other products that you can use in hosting websites and applications. One product that is most frequently used is the DigitalOcean droplets. And we're going to see how to work with that before anything else. If you don't have a DigitalOcean account, you can use the invite link in my description below, and that's going to give you $200 free credit. And you can use that to try DigitalOcean. So just come in here, enter your email address, password, and all the other details. Once you do that and you successfully create your account, you're going to log into the DigitalOcean dashboard where you can manage your resources. First thing you're going to see here is projects. So you can create a project and this is going to house all your resources. If you have droplets, IP addresses, they will be housed under a particular project. If you don't create any project, there will be a default project where everything will go into. And then here we have manage and under manage, this is where you're going to find the different resources that you can create on DigitalOcean. Resources that you can create and manage under DigitalOcean. But as I said, we're mostly interested in droplets and we're going to see how to deploy a droplet and log into that droplet. So let's start with that. So if you don't have a project, you can create a project and this is going to be a house for all your projects. I'm going to use this for demos project and as the name suggests, this is the one that I use for demonstrations on DigitalOcean. Once you're inside of that project, you can just come in here and click on the create button and you'll see there are lots of different resources you can create on DigitalOcean. We're going to go with a droplet. A droplet is just a virtual machine or a VPS that you can create on DigitalOcean. So if you click there on droplet, we can get started creating our first droplet. So of course you have to choose a region where you want your droplet to be and you need to choose a region that is close to your visitors. If most of your visitors are in Germany, you go with a region in Germany. If they're in America, you choose a location in America. So I'm just going to go with New York. I don't know where these data centers are, so I'm just going to choose that, number three. And then VPC. You can create a VPC and a VPC is a virtual network. If you want to create multiple servers, maybe you want to run Kubernetes manually, you want to put them in the same network or you want to run multiple Docker containers in a network, you can create a VPC network. If you come here under networking, you should be able to create your VPC there. In most cases, you're going to find you don't really need to create a VPC. You'll just use the default network that DigitalOcean creates for you. I'm going to leave that on the default one. And the benefit of a VPC is that if you have multiple servers in that network, they can communicate using the private IP addresses. You don't have to use the public IP address and that is better for security. Maybe you have a DB server that needs to communicate with a web server, needs to communicate with an application server. You can create that kind of a system whereby everything communicates using a private IP address. That's where the VPC network comes in. And then of course, most importantly, you need to choose an image. So an image is the server you're going to run on your droplet. In my case, I'm going to go with Ubuntu, but first of all, let's just click there on Marketplace to see the options that are available. So if you click on Marketplace, you're going to see there are lots, lots of different turnkey applications that have been made available for you. If you want to install Docker, you can install Docker. If you want cPanel, you can get cPanel. WordPress is there. Here, you can find anything you're looking for. Maybe you want to install Django, let's see if there's anything here for Django. There you go. You want to run Django, you can click on Django and install everything that will run your Django application. So that's under Droplet Marketplace. Custom images, maybe you have an ISO that you want to run and it's not provided under DigitalOcean. You can come in here and add your image and install it on your Droplet. So let's go back to OS and I'm just going to go with Ubuntu. If you don't want to use Ubuntu, you can always choose this other Linux server distros. So if you're going to use Ubuntu, always go with an LTS version, something like 22.04, 20.04 is okay. I'm going to go with 22.04. So you use an LTS because as the name suggests, it is a long term supported version. That means you're going to get better stability. And then choose the size of your droplets. There are different types of droplets, shared CPU and dedicated CPUs. Depending on what you want to use, you can select from there. 
I'm going to go with basic and usually you'll find we'll just be using the basic shared CPU VPSs. So in this case, you can choose a regular with the type of SSD, you can choose premium Intel with a type of NVMe, or you can choose premium AMD with NVMe SSDs. Let's just say I want to go with this and you're going to see I get 25 GB for the $6. How about this one? This one will be $7 for the 25 GB. If you're particular about storage speed, then you just go with the premium AMD or the premium Intel. So I've used AMD a lot. Let me just try out premium Intel today. And you can see this one is much more expensive than the other one. I don't understand why. All right, I can see you get more storage space with premium Intel. I'm just going to go with the premium Intel. I will choose the 8 GB per month option. Right, let's continue on. Additional storage. If you need additional storage, you can always add block storage. Now, block storage is just like adding an additional disk to your VPS. So if this is something you want to do, you can do it at this stage. So you can click there and follow the prompt to add space. If you need more storage space, this is something you can think about adding on your droplet. And then backups. You can enable backups. If you enable backups, of course, it's going to come with an additional cost, which is 20% of your droplet cost. So 20% of the server that you're paying for up there. And you can see there are weekly backups where you'll get four weekly backups. And then there are daily backups and daily backups are 30% of your cost up there. For this, I'm just going to disable automatic backups and then choose an authentication method. So you can choose an SSH key or you can choose a password. I do have a video about exactly how to create an SSH key and add it to DigitalOcean. If I don't add the link to that video in my description below, just remind me and I will add it. It will guide you through the steps for how to generate an SSH key on your computer, add it to DigitalOcean and use it to deploy a droplet on DigitalOcean. So I'm just going to go with SSH key because I already have an SSH key that is added. But if you don't and you don't want to use an SSH key, you can always get a good old password right there. Just click there and you're going to create a password for the root user. This is a key that I still have the private key for. So I'm going to use that. So you can enable metrics. Of course, just enable that. It's free. And then you can add worry free managed database. So if you're going to run something like WordPress or WooCommerce on a large scale, I would recommend you just go with a managed database service instead of hosting the database yourself. If that is your use case, then you can go with a managed database service because it will take away the pain of managing a database yourself and it comes with lots of different other advantages. Now let's look at the advanced options here. What do we have? Enable IPv6, which is free. Of course, you may need an IPv6. Add initialization scripts. If you have certain scripts that you want to run, maybe you want to install certain applications, when your droplet is being deployed, you can do so here. You'll just check that and then enter your user data here. You can learn more about user data. So maybe you want to install Apache during this setup or you want to uninstall Apache during the droplet setup. That's something you can do. You can simply just do sudo apt install whatever it is based on the format for user data on DigitalOcean. So just click there and you can learn more about this and see how you can do it. Of course, I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to leave IPv6 checked and then finalize the details. How many droplets do you want to create? If you want to create multiple servers, maybe you need three different servers. You can create more than one droplet and you see it should be eight times three. Make sure you're aware of the cost. So I'm just going to deploy one droplet. That's all I need. And then as for the host name, if you're going to install a control panel on your server and control panels are things like cPanel, STSCP, CyberPanel, VirtualMean, and the rest. If you're going to install something like that on your server, Let's go with a fully qualified domain name. So a fully qualified domain name is a domain name that you can add DNS records and it would be accessible. So it can be a full domain or a subdomain. In this case, let me just go with a subdomain and I can call it pan. I think I have a domain called cloudubuntu.com. All right. Yeah, that's the domain. So let's come back here and I'm just going to use that as my sample. pen.cloudubuntu.com and you can tag it. Maybe this is a production server. This is a development server. 
maybe it is an application server web server you can tag it or database server you can tag it there and then you can choose the project where you want this to be housed if you want it in a different project you can select the project right there that's pretty much it for all the settings i need for my droplet once i'm done with that i can simply click on create droplet you can also create it via the cli so you can click there it's going to give you this and you can copy you can see it has taken all my settings and placed them as a curl bash post that you can use on your cli i'm going to close that create droplets so once the droplet is created we're going to see how we can log in via ssh you can see we have created the droplet inside of this project and this is just a nice way for you to group your different resources so let it continue creating and once it is done we're going to get the ip address and we're going to see how we can log in there we go it's now created there is our ip address you can click on it so first of all before i do anything let's just go and log into this server of course if you want to manage your droplet the best way is for you to use terminal on your computer because that makes it easier to manage it if you're on windows you can log in using git bash on a mac or linux you can just go ahead and use terminal so in my case i'm just going to use terminal i'm going to use git bash because i'm on windows so if you're on windows like me and you want to follow along just download git and then open git bash download and install git and then open git bash if you're on linux open terminal everything is going to be the same nothing is going to change in terms of the commands and processes so i'm just going to open git bash and i can log into my ssh i can log into my droplet ssh and the user is root root at the ip address to paste in git bashes shift insert so ssh root at that and then i already added a key on my server and i'm going to choose the identity of the key dash i for the identity of the key and the key should be inside of dot ssh slash do slash do tab to auto complete it so this is the key this is a key for my server this is a key that i added to digital ocean and as i said i have a video for that i will add the link if i forget sometimes i forget if i do forget just remind me i'm going to add the video there for you press enter and let's see so it's asking to accept the fingerprint for my server key so type yes to confirm this you have to type yes if you don't type yes you're going to go through this process again so just type yes press enter and there we go now we are logged into our digital ocean droplet so i just press ctrl l to clear the screen and then i can update my ubuntu droplet so i'm just going to do i don't really need sudo because i am the root user so i'm just going to do apt update to see if there are any updates there we go we have so many packages can be upgraded so if you want to upgrade the packages Make sure you do apt upgrade dash y to upgrade all the packages that need to be upgraded the ssh configuration file is different of course i want to keep the local version that i already have so i'm just going to press tab and that's going to take me to ok and then i can press enter and then it's telling me there's a newer kernel for this i would need to reboot so i'm just going to press enter it's also asking me which other services should be restarted for this as well i'm just going to leave it at the default what it has selected and then i'm going to press tab to get to ok and then i'm going to press enter and there we go the server is now updated and upgraded right so i will clear the screen and i can just do hostname ctl to see some details about the server and you can see virtualization kvm and we're running ubuntu 22.04 and the linux kernel is that but if i reboot the server it's going to update it to the one the one it should update to all right if all you wanted to do was to learn about digital ocean droplets how to deploy them 
log in and start doing whatever you need to do with your server then you can stop watching the video there but for the rest of the video i just want to do an overview of all these other items just so we know what they are and what you can use them for so i'm going to do another video about managing your droplet and you're going to look at all these others so i don't want to do them in this video because it might be too long so i'll do them in another video and hopefully you'll support me by watching that video so let's start by app platform i'm just going to click there on app platform app platform allows you to host your applications on digital ocean without deploying the server like we just did so what you'll do is if you click there on create app you'll just choose where your code is if it is on github gitlab or it is in DigitalOcean container registry docker hub you can just select where it is and then you can continue from there or if you want to test it and see how to work with it you can come in here and you can select one of the sample applications that DigitalOcean has provided for this purpose feel free to play around with this just to see what it can provide for you so if you have static websites you can host your static websites for free on DigitalOcean app platform and then we've looked at droplets so let's go to functions functions are like aws lambda if you know about aws lambda it is a similar thing you run your code and you're charged based on the runtime this is what you'll get free 25 gb hours or 90,000 gb seconds if you know what aws lambda does how it works this is something similar it is a serverless platform that allows you to run your functions so this is best used when your code runs at a specific time for a short period of time if you do it for a long period of time usually it ends up being very expensive so if it is a code that runs for a small amount of time use functions and then kubernetes if you don't know what kubernetes is it is used for managing containers so if you have images maybe your company uses containers for everything and you need to manage containers so there are lots of kubernetes tutorials you can see how to work with kubernetes and kubernetes on digital ocean is charged based on the server you're using you're not charged for the control plane the control plane is what manages the entire cluster so for the kubernetes cluster that you get on digital ocean you don't pay for the control plane you only pay for the resources that you're using and resources may include things like storage managed databases and also if you want to use load balancers you can use the load balancers provided by digital ocean and those are some of the few resources i can think about that you'd need to pay for if you're using kubernetes on digital ocean and then volumes block storage when we were deploying the droplet you saw that you could add block storage to your droplet if you need additional storage you can add block storage and attach them to your droplet so just click there to add a volume and you can see more about what next you can do and then managed databases if you don't want to run a database server on your own you can get digital ocean managed database servers at 15 dollars per month it starts at 15 dollars per month so if you go to the pricing page you're going to find a price breakdown for all digital ocean prices for different services so these are the supported database engines that you can run on digital ocean mongodb postgres mysql redis and kafka if you want to use any of this you can use the managed database services from digital ocean because it will save you a lot of headache in running your own database servers and then the next thing let's look at spaces if you go to spaces spaces is object storage what is object storage object storage think in terms of amazon s3 and i believe it is s3 compliant if i'm not wrong most of these services are usually s3 compliant for the object storage object storage you can store static files maybe you want to host videos you want somewhere where you can put uh, static files like images and other static resources for your website you can use object storage and then container registry i believe this is a docker hub alternative so if you want to store your container images in a private repository you can go with the digital ocean container registry and this emphasizes on private registry docker hub if you're using the free account it's going to give you i think one i could be wrong but i think it gives you one private repository if you want a repository on digital ocean you can come in here look at the documentation see how you can create it and you can create your containers privately emphasis here is on private repositories and then images let's see what options are here under images these are snapshots that you create on digital ocean 
and you create them from your droplets and you can use the snapshots to deploy a new resource and you can see that this is charged at a specific rate so if yours is 20 gb you multiply that by 20 gb and that's what you're going to pay per month if it is 100 gb you multiply with that and that's what you're going to pay per month to store your snapshot image on digital ocean now let's go into networking we are almost finishing under networking you see we have load balancers so if you want to create load balancers you can come here and create load balancers i think it starts at ten dollars a month i'm not particularly sure about this if you click to create a load balancer you can choose the different resources for your load balancer so it is charged based on the number of nodes we go with new york and then vpc let's forget vpc number of nodes so it is charged per node that's that you can start with one node see how it performs connections per second request per second you can see the more nodes you add the higher the request and everything becomes so you can set up everything there you need to set up https so just look at the documentation to see how you can work with the load balancer for digital ocean so under networking let's talk about vpc I already said something about vpc so just a demonstration here let's say that is your that is your private network instead of this private network you have resources so maybe here you're going to have your web application here you have an application server and then and then here you have a database so all of this is, is inside of your private network this is your web application uh, that's your application server and then that's your db so you might find a situation whereby you only want the web server to be accessible on the outside if you put all of them in a private network and then using the firewall you prevent access to these resources you can have a situation whereby the public ip is there and you allow this to access this using the private IP address and this one as well you allow it to be accessed using the private IP address public IP will be that that is accessible on the internet so this can be accessed using the private IP addresses so if you add if you use the private IP addresses that you're provided you can allow access to that only to the private IP address and that's something you can do on the firewall that is just something i wanted to explain about the vpc network and why it's beneficial you also have firewalls you can create firewalls allow access into various ports deny access only allow access to various ip addresses that's something you can do there just create a firewall and then you can attach it to different resources your droplets your kubernetes and so on ptr record if you're going to host something on your server maybe you're going to install a control panel you can come in here under ptr records and then you can add this and you can see since i added a fully qualified domain name for my droplet it has been added here as a reverse dns for that ip so this is a good thing that digital ocean does automatically for you so we've looked at firewalls vpcs load balancers reserved ips you can reserve ips when you destroy a droplet you're going to lose that ip by default so if you want to reserve that ip you can do so you can reserve that ip let's say this is the ip for for the droplet that i've just deployed so i've selected it here and i can choose to assign it as a reserved ip so i'm not going to do that but this is something you can do if you don't want to lose your ip you can come in here and reserve that ip i believe there's a charge that's involved with this so just find out how much it is and then you can assign a reserved ip so even if you lose that droplet you change the droplet you can assign it to this ip so finally domains here is where you're going to manage your dns records as a sample i could add it here and manage the dns records so First of all, you'll click there to add the domain. And once you add the domain, this is not the end of it. First of all, you need to go back to where your domain is being hosted and you need to add the name server records for DigitalOcean. That way it will tell the internet, right? I'm just going to say the internet. It will tell the internet that people 
who want to access your domain need to go to Cloudflare. That is where the DNS is being handled. So you can just click there, copy, add it to your domain provider. If your domain provider is Namecheap, GoDaddy, wherever you bought your domain from, go there. Then you add these records as name servers for your domain. And then DigitalOcean can start managing your DNS for that domain. So what you'd need to do after you do that, you'll come in here and then you'll enter your host name for the A record. And then you select where it will redirect to. I can just select it to redirect to that and then I will create the record. So right now, even if I add all these records, it's not going to do anything because the number one point of contact has not been changed. And the number one point of contact is your domain provider. When someone goes to access your domain, it will go to their server and let the internet know where to go next. Right, that's how you can start managing your domain's DNS record via DigitalOcean. So we've done networking and we've looked at all these other different networking elements. So let's go back to manage and see what's remaining here. So monitoring, you can monitor your servers. You can also add alerts. So you can create an alert that says if CPU utilization is above 70% for at least five minutes, man, just let me know. This is going to tell you that something is wrong or maybe you can make it 10 minutes. If the CPU is above 70% for 10 minutes, it will alert you via email. I'm just going to ignore that. And let's look at the add-ons that DigitalOcean has. These are things that are provided by DigitalOcean as well as third-party providers. So just come in here and see what else you could find interesting for your droplet or for your DigitalOcean resource. So billing, of course, when you set up your account, you go into billing, you add your payment option. And if you need support, you just click there on support and you can contact DigitalOcean support. You can create a ticket under support. Let's go into settings for a minute and that's the last thing we're going to look at. You can change your details there under settings, team. If you scroll down, you can add other members. And then for security, you can add SSH keys go into settings security and you can add ssh keys if you want to refer digital ocean and get free credit you can do so just go into referrals and you'll get your link right here so if you give 200 you'll get 25 share your link and you can get digital ocean credit for 25 dollars if you get people to sign up and spend at least 25 dollars all right so this should cover the digital ocean tutorial and just to sum it up we started with the one thing that most people use on DigitalOcean, which is Droplet. What we did is we deployed a Droplet and we saw how to log into that Droplet. I would like to reiterate that I did use an SSH key for the Droplet setup. That means that if you want to use an SSH key as well, you need to know how to generate the key and you also need to know how to add the key to DigitalOcean. And if you want to see how to do that, I have a video, a full video. There we go. DigitalOcean SSH key set up for new droplet. There you go. So that's the video. I will put the link in the description. All right. This should pretty much cover the DigitalOcean tutorial. This is kind of a long video, but I hope it has given you the confidence you needed to start using DigitalOcean. If you're going to sign up for DigitalOcean, why not get 200 free credit, right? To test the platform. All you need to do is add your payment method once you've set up your account. 60 days free trial. This is good because some providers don't even tell you how long it lasts. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. If you're going to use other VPS providers, I have provided a link for the VPS providers that I recommend, especially for beginners. See you next time in another video.